Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so we now move to the future. We move to current developments R&D and future. In the next 12 minutes or so or 15 minutes or so, I am going to talk about electrical propulsion and then in the last uh, slot, I will talk about ionic propulsion. So what is electrical propulsion? Using electricity either stored in the batteries or in any other means by magnetic forces to generate the thrust that you need. So, what you do is very simple. All of us know that there are several remotely controlled planes which are flying today with electrical powered aircraft. Okay. So, there is nothing new. The only thing is do we have the ability to do it fit for manned aircraft. Okay. So, the issues are you need to have a mechanism for storing the electrical power in the forms of batteries or some other devices and you need electrical motors to produce the thrust that is needed. Okay. But interestingly, it is not new. Many, many years ago, in 1883 itself, actually we had an electrical powered aircraft. It was a small airship by Tissandier. So, electrical powered aircraft are not new. Many years ago in October 1983, 1883 itself we had an airship which was powered by electrical propulsion. Okay. But our interest is to look at aircraft which are available today and I have already discussed with you about this aircraft when we looked at the aerofoil. Okay. Uh, if you recall we looked at solar impulse and we realized that this is an aircraft which is completely covered with solar cells right from the fuselage, on the wing, on the tail. And the aerofoils were such that they were, they were having a flattish upper surface to allow easy, easy mounting of the solar cells. Okay. And recently the aircraft has completed on the uh, around the world journey, not non-stop, but around the world with various stops. Uh, it also travelled India. Let us have a look at some other R&D aircraft which are currently. This is a very interesting example of an all electric airplane uh, called as the Magnus E Fusion. This is a technology which is basically being developed by Siemens of Germany. The uh, Magnus E-Fusion is a wonderful aircraft. This uh, was actually the second flight of the aircraft that uh, Fabian Gabor and myself did together. So this is really an, uh, another important milestone in electric aviation. Siemens has developed a whole firewall forward drivetrain, le electrical drivetrain with the batteries, the motor, the power electronics and the control system. Actually, the batteries were developed by Siemens Hungary specifically for aircraft uh, application being very robust and having a very double redundant battery management system. Magnus Aircraft Corporation is a Hungarian light sport developer and manufacturer based in Kecskemét in Hungary. The Siemens partner was the best choice for working with us since they have the experience and knowledgeable engineering team and possessing reliable uh, solutions. The Magnus E-Fusion will serve Siemens for the further development of the aviation battery system. Magnus gave the E-Fusion the capability of aerobatics so it can serve as an upside recovery trainer. So this aircraft has been developed by a company called Magnus in and the, the drive train and the storage has come from Siemens. Okay. There are many more examples of aircraft which are uh, either under development or under uh, design 
using electrical propulsion. For example, this is a good example of a distributed propulsion system ok. And here is an example of uh, an aircraft called extra 330. This video is in German and there is an English translation available on the bottom. Die Welt wird elektrischer und zwar nicht nur zu Wasser und zu Lande, sondern auch in der Luft. Mit dem heutigen Erstflug der Extra 330 LE haben wir einen Meilenstein erreicht auf dem Weg zu den elektrischen Antrieben für Luftfahrzeuge. Siemens hat für dieses Flugzeug den kompletten elektrischen Antriebsstrang einschließlich Leistungselektronik und Motor geliefert und dieses Flugzeug wird uns als Erprobungsträger für die Weiterentwicklung dieser Komponenten und unserer Systeme dienen. So this is a different aircraft. This one is called as the extra. Okay? But you can see it took off with one fourth of a megawatt power output. And just 50 kilograms gave you 250 kilowatts of power. So that is an amazing power to weight ratio. Then let us look at a distributed electric propulsion. This is also an interesting video which talks about the future, about how things are going to come. For a typical aircraft, you'll see one propeller on the nose of an aircraft or, or two uh, nacelles on the wings of an aircraft. So just very few and not very well integrated in terms of the entire aircraft system. What we're looking at is how highly distributed electric propulsion can change the way aircraft are designed. Electric motors, uh, controllers have just made incredible breakthroughs over the last 10 years. We're able to get four horsepower per pound out of an electric motor and controller, which is as good as a turbine engine. And for that same electric motor, that's 95% efficient. Well, if you look at a turbine, that's about 45% efficient. So the idea has been around a long time to distribute the propulsion, but because of the characteristics of uh, of reciprocating in turbine engine technologies, we simply couldn't do it in practical, feasible ways. Electric propulsion lets us have this new degree of freedom to put the engines and propulsors anywhere we want without mechanical complexity. It opens up the degrees of freedom that an aircraft designer can, can use these propulsion technologies. And in terms of the capabilities that that can create for us, very low energy consumption, very low emissions. And in fact, the aircraft that we're designing right now and taking to a flight demonstrator can use five times less energy than the best general aviation aircraft out on the market today. For, for this Leap Tech project, we have fantastic uh, industry partners, Joby Aviation and ES Aero, smaller companies that can take higher risk and be much more agile, who are helping us to build the hardware, to test the hardware, to perform very, very rapid analyses uh, and, and bring it back so that we can put all the different jigsaw puzzle pieces together into a co cohesive whole that all the discipline experts uh, say makes sense. We're working kind of in a spiral development where we're working at the small scale with UAVs, we're able to quickly get to flight testing and learn from that experience. So we've been working at that small scale for the past year to two years. This year we're at the larger scale where we're, we're building a 31 foot span wing with 300 horsepower and testing that wing. So the third spiral that we're just starting to work on is actually a flight demonstrator at the general aviation size where we'll be having an X-plane over the next three years to uh, prove that all these different disciplines can work together in very, very highly coupled fashion to achieve the objectives that I've been discussing. Okay. Now, there is also a proposal that we can have passenger airplanes in which people like you and me can fly 
which are powered only by electrical motors. But it is a combination, it is not just electrical motors. So, let us have a look at what are the kind of suggestions which are being given. An electrically powered airliner is within reach according to Airbus. The company is already flying its E-Fan light training aircraft which are due to enter service by the end of 2017. Now it's stepping up research aimed at achieving a fully electrically powered airliner in the 70 to 90 seat class. The E-Thrust program is a joint effort by Airbus and Rolls-Royce to develop an electrical distributed propulsion system. Yeah, with this uh, technology project we try to achieve to make regional aircraft with 70 to 90 seats starting and landing fully electrical in the next decades uh, to come. The advantage will be nearly no noise around airports and inhabited areas, no direct emissions with CO2, NOx or other ones, and by that a more comfortable way of flight, especially for the neighbors uh, of the airport and for the passengers. E-thrust involves several fans installed along the wing that are powered by electricity from a battery charged by a single gas turbine engine. This technology is a combination of uh, combustion technology, so there will be a, a turbine, combustion turbine on board. The combustion turbine will uh, generate mechanical power, which is operating to a generator and then charging batteries. That's the second point, the real electrical engines, which are distributed along the wings. So we see here six electrical engine propulsion units, a fan with an electrical motor, and so we have the capability to start fully electrical, to land fully electrical and to recharge the batteries on flight level during the cruise flights. One key aspect of the technology is the use of superconductivity in the cables, generators and motors. The point is with uh, today engines who have power to weight ratios of some kilowatt per kilogram, for instance typical for airplanes 6 to 8 kilowatt uh, per kilogram, for an original aircraft, we essentially need to improve this ratio, power to weight. And one key enabling technology will be superconductivity. With superconductivity, we will have better engines, electrical engines, and we will save weight for the cables. For instance, uh, if you have a cable bundle for 4,500 amperes today, which has a weight of around uh, 12 to 15, even sometimes 20 kilogram, then in comparison to that, the superconductivity cable will have a weight only of a few grams. And this is not a dream. Superconductivity is existing today in different fields of technology. We need to bring it together with our partners to industrial application for engines and cable bundles. We asked AIN technology specialist Terry Dubois about the feasibility of this concept. This would be very significant. Uh, this is a much smarter way of using energy. Instead of having, say, variable regimes uh, in your engine, you have an engine that runs at a constant regime, constant rotor speed, if you wish, constant, constant RPM, and you have electric fans which are much more suitable for variations, for giving high power at some point and cruise power at another point. So this is much smarter use of energy. It's very significant because otherwise, without superconductivity, you have huge cables that just weigh too much, basically they would be too heavy. So superconductivity allows you to have small cables with let's say, a weight that would be suitable for aviation. And this technology, superconductivity, has started being used in other industries. It has left the laboratory and has started being used in other industries. So it's still too early for aviation and we are maybe, maybe decades away from superconductivity in aviation but this would be very, very useful for aviation. It's very realistic, but it's very long term. Uh, they face a lot of, of obstacles. For example, they face uh, obstacles in power density in uh, batteries. So they don't even call them batteries. Well, what they will use may be something else. Maybe this will not be batteries. So they call it something like power storage or energy storage devices. Uh, another big challenge will be superconductivity, which we uh, referred to previously. And another challenge will be the connection, or, well, say the, the optimization between the big conventional engine and the smaller electric fans. 
So the big one is relatively conventional, but still you have to optimize it for this kind of use, which is very different. You no longer have to have uh, takeoff power, for example. You just need cruise power. So this may lead to very different designs. So th there are quite a, a lot of challenges. In my lifetime, I do expect to fly in an electric aircraft. For okay. So in the interest of time, I'll just like to go ahead and talk about now the hybrid propulsion system or propulsion systems which are going, we saw something of that in the previous uh, video also, <laughs> but I think this video elaborates more on the concept of hybrid propulsion system. This is a project between two companies, Rolls Royce and EADS Innovation. Similar concept actually. We have already seen this. Okay. Moving on to the future. There is something called as ionic propulsion, which has a tremendous potential to really transform the way in which we actually create thrust okay so let's have a look at so for my report is. i did ion thrusters there are relatively new means of spacecraft propulsion they were first invented only around 40 or 50 years ago this is what they look like you can kind of see one here they utilize the coulomb force to accelerate positively charged ions and create thrust here in the figure you can see that uh, on the left hand side, that red cylinder represents a hot cathode that shoots electrons into the system. This one. Around that cathode, you can see these green circles. Uh, those are the propellant atoms entering the system as well. The most commonly used propellant is xenon. It's non reactive and it's non corrosive. So it makes a very good propellant for these types of engines. So back to the figure. This middle area here, where everything's mixing together, this is called the ionization chamber. In this chamber, the electrons collide with the xenon atoms on their way to the anode. So the electrons come out of the cathode and kind of try to hop over to the anode, and on their way, xenon gets in the way. When the electron collides with xenon, it knocks loose one of xenon's electrons, giving it a positive charge. So once we had these positively charged xenon atoms floating around, they begin to diffuse towards these grids on the right-hand side of the figure. These are called the acceleration grids. The innermost grid has a positive charge and the outermost grid has a negative charge. So the atoms begin to pass through the positive grid and then they're attracted to the negative grid. This is causes them to accelerate massively and fly out of the back of the ship. You can kind of see that here. This is one of them in action. You can see that blue light kind of coming out of the back. So once you have all these ions floating around behind your ship, you need to return them to normal charge otherwise they'll be attracted back towards your ship. This is done with another cathode on the outside of the ship. Seen here, this little white rectangle on top, uh, and there's another one here, that uh, rectangle on top of the thruster. That cathode injects more electrons into the ship's wake, returning the xenon atoms to neutral charge. So after all that science, you probably think you're really zooming about flying around the universe. You're not at all. Ion thrusters are only capable of producing around 91 millinewtons of force. That's the amount of force involved in holding up a piece of notebook paper in your hand. So not very much thrust at all. NASA's website says, quote, you would not want to use ion propulsion to get on a freeway. At maximum throttle, it would take four days to get from zero to 60 miles per hour. <laughs> so you can imagine trying to do that. So you might be wondering why we even use ion propulsion. It turns out that it's about 10 times more fuel efficient than chemical rockets. This is due to its very high specific impulse, which is basically just force per unit of propellant used. And the scientists estimate that it can reach top speeds 10 times higher than that of chemical rockets. They say they can reach speeds up to 200,000 miles per hour. So with the fuel efficiency of a Prius, top speed of a Lamborghini, and acceleration of a potted plant, these ion thruster engines have really become a favorite for deep space exploration. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. So this is not for, this is not for powering civil transport aircraft 
or for transporting general aviation. This is meant for transporting or powering the probes for space exploration because the amount of thrusts that they can generate is very small. However, that is sufficient for us to generate the thrust needed in space. Okay. So, it can be used to increase the life of the spacecraft by providing a small amount of thrust for much longer duration of time and helping in the position keeping. Okay. So, the process is very simple. You have a propellant something like xenon which is thrown in source of ions and then you have an accelerating electrode in which they are accelerated. You bombard the xenon with the ions from the cathode and then you give it a positive charge then it is attracted and then you emit and finally, you create uh, a mechanism by which you can go back uh, on the rear and uh, reduce the charge to normal levels. Okay. So, these are the characteristics. So, the specific impulse is very high although the numerical value of thrust may be quite some small value. Thank you.